Welcome on Makosi Network, welcome to the channel. Today we will be dissecting the Chase vs. Royal AM game that is still haunting a lot of us, but we will address it. But yeah, guys, that's what we will chat about today. And yeah, before we get into it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe is the most important word, guys. If you, yeah, just subscribe, guys. Subscribe to the channel. And yeah, let's get to it. So I went and got the game. And you know what I do after the game. I anal anal analyze the game. And then I dissect what, I, what we saw in the game. So let's kick it into it. The first frame of the shot is where the Frostler. Frostler here is going to kick, he's going to lose the ball. He's going to kick it into this defender that's right in front of him. This was from the first, very first, first minute. And it already told us how the game will, will go. Chiefs will not hold on to the ball. And they struggle in the middle. And yeah, as you can see in this moment, uh, Castillo is playing a number six. And Matt is up, etc. But I was already skeptical when I saw this frame because I was like, I, if Frost is struggling to, he's just going to kick forward, then it's not going to be a good game. Second frame, this is where Dupree got his chance in the 23rd minute. Before this, you were seeing it's the 23rd minute. Just know, before this, it was Royal AM, why, why? And I was not going to show the Royal AM. But yeah, Royal AM was attacking us. Dupree here, yeah, I put a question mark saying like, here Dupree already is scared, it's that as a larynx. But anyway, third frame, I am highlighting, Guti, this keeper was so far out his line, guys. Like, Dupree just had to hit the target. Like, I don't know what else we can say here. Because this was the easiest chance Dupree will ever have in his life, except for maybe a tap-in. But like, he really failed this one, like, just to hit the target. It makes you wonder what he practices at training. Because in this moment, his body language already told me Guti I is not that comfortable in this situation, which already is an issue. When you are a striker, you have to simulate these issues so much in training that it becomes second nature. Here, you could tell Dupri was scared. The next frame, I show Nkosin Pilengob. Here, they marked Nkosin Pilengob, and I wanted to show you Guti. He could have squared it for Modi there at the far, um, <clears throat> at the far side of the field, or pass it through for Dupree. But Ungobo is slow these days. I don't know what's happening. And in the next frame, I'm going to highlight why Ungobo is slow. Guys, this frame is showing how big Ungobo is now. Ungobo has too much weight. Ah, uh ah, -uh, guys. Ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, uh ah, -uh. ah. And this is one thing I wanted to highlight in this game. Why are all Kaiser Chiefs players so heavy? Like, Ungobo is heavy. Um, Shabalala is starting to look a bit heavy. Keegan Dolly is heavy. Like, Castillo is even looking more heavy than he usually does. Like, this Muzi's personal trainer, eh, Keza Cheese. Guys, I don't think he's a good guy. I don't think he's a good trainer. These guys look unfit. Like, they look heavy, guys. Like, they don't look like... They don't look like soccer players. If this guy if was in a rugby game, I'd say, yeah, it makes more sense than what I'm seeing now. Next one is set pieces. The reason why I highlighted this, Ungobo is going to shoot here. And then I'm, I already saw with this guy, is they don't practice set pieces. One thing I've been arguing since the beginning of the season is that I don't understand why Keza Cheese does not practice set pieces properly. Because they have some of the tallest players in all the games. There we have Tlanti, we have Ngobo, we have Zumsimango, we have Castillo, uh, uh, we have Usaile. But these guys never got one decent corner or free kick. They never got one decent free kick or set piece for them to challenge the keeper. So I don't understand why, why we don't utilize our height. You know, one thing Stuart Baxter did when he got to Chiefs, he won the league with free kicks and set pieces alone. Uh, Gavin Hunt till today utilizes set pieces. But Chiefs, I don't know what Kevin Johnson is doing. Like, I, I'm, I'm disappointed. This is one thing I've been crying about the whole season. Guti, we have to be threatening yes we won't score all set pieces but let's be threatening here i just put a circle around it to show guti Ungobo here kicked on target which in the second half Udol is gonna do the exact same thing and he won't they won't supply look at the height that we have there but anyway second one next one is in the second half now sahile was shooting here sahile same problem as dupree 
In this moment, I wanted to specifically highlight this chance here with Sahil. Sahil got to the pole first and then he just kicked it over the pole. Ne? One thing that is funny is that when I was watching the DDC, Keza Chiefs has that young striker, that 15-year-old, do Neo Bushoko. Neo Bushoko had the exact same chance, exactly the same chance as Saile. Exa like when I say carbon copy, exactly. What did Neo Bushoko do in this instance? He did not shoot this shot with, like, with venom. He literally just chipped the keeper and the ball went into the pole. That is all he did. He just literally chipped the ball just to avoid the keeper. The ball went into the net. But we have Abu Saile doing this. And the sad thing is that these guys are going to influence these youngsters to start doing this nonsense. But yeah, anyway, second frame, yeah, this is Saile just missing all these chances. Next one is Dupree. Here I highlighted so many options Dupree had. What did Dupree do? He chipped the ball into the keeper's hand. Like, Dupree, I don't know. Like, Dupree needs a serious striker coach because... Like, he does not think when he's in a scoring position. He does not think. In this moment, he had a chance to either chip the keeper. He had a chance to round out the keeper because he has pace. Like, Dupree, if he runs past the keeper, he has pace. He will score. He also had a chance to kick the ball through the keeper's legs. But what did Dupree do? He chipped the ball into the keeper's hands. Like, every option that was there, Dupree didn't try even one of them. He decided just to pass the keeper in the hands. So that's, yeah, that's the unfortunate part of sometimes watching Keza Chiefs. We see nonsense like this. Um, the next one here is Saile shooting. I won't go into too much detail with this one. Yeah, Saile was shooting. Yeah, that's nice. He missed. One thing I wanted to show in this one is that Saile should have, if, yeah, there was another option of maybe finding Dupree, but you know what? You can't blame Saile for this one. Yeah, it makes sense that he shot. This is the Keegan Dolly free kick. First of all, Keegan Dolly is going to shoot to score. My first issue is the run up. Guys, I hate short run ups. I hate it. It never, these guys force to, themselves to generate power to short run up, but they don't have enough momentum to make it dip. You need to have enough of a run-up to make the shot dip. If you don't have a run-up, number one, the shot won't, the, the free kick won't have enough venom. Number two, why is Dolly at least not trying to square for our defenders? Castillo is there, 75 minutes. We know Castillo is good at the head. Let's prioritize the people who know we know they can score. There's Novo, there's Msimango, there's Slanti. Guys... There's tall players. Look at how short Royal AM is compared to us. But we don't supply our tall guys. We And in these arrows, I'm showing Guti. These guys must just put the ball right there between the keeper and the players. And let our players run onto it. It's a goal. That much I can tell you. Here I'm showing. Dolly has already taken the shot now. But I'm showing you Guti. In this moment, look at Castillo. He beat all of those players. If Dolly had just passed the ball right Castillo is scoring ahead. Next one is Saile again trying to shoot, and then yeah, the ball ends up going, and um, yeah, he shoots, but yeah, there was a good shot, but yeah, didn't yield any results. It came back to Umdu in this frame here, and Umdu instead of passing Castillo, he decided to try a dribble. At this moment, I'm going to say this: Umdu Shabalala is not playing like Umdu Shabalala. Umdu is trying. Is losing the ball too easily. This is not how he played in TTC. In TTC, if it was not on, he was not going to just kick it. In this chance here, he ended up just kicking it. That is not how Mdu Shabalala plays. If it's not on, he's going to um, go back or find another solution, but not lose the ball. Mdu Shabalala, one thing I picked up from watching him in this game is that he plays without using his head it's like we were playing like Mulefin Tseki where we were just running and this is actually going to go to the to another point here yeah, Mdu was well positioned one thing I'll say about Mdu Shabala in this game is that he may have not done everything right but he brought the right attitude and the right energy he was completely just going forward his aim was to go forward Mdu would get the ball turn around and face the defenders and that is one reason why I say I feel Mdu should start the next game ahead of Modi or yeah ahead of Modi I do honestly believe that 
the next chance is when dude decided to try and play a square pass but he ended up finding a defender because he rushes this is yeah that's that's the last video that's the last picture but before i want to end it i want to highlight this i highlighted the weight and another thing i wanted to highlight is kevin johnson came in last um after Mulefitzeki, and the one thing he, he highlighted was that our players play too fast they rush 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 in this game they were playing the exact same thing so then I was so confused as to what Kevin Johnson was doing in the preseason because this is the one thing he complained about. But here, Matt was losing the ball rushing. Do losing the ball rushing. Modi losing the ball rushing. Saile losing the ball rushing. Dupree rushing and missing easy chances. I don't understand what Kevin Johnson was doing during the break. I honestly don't understand. Guys. Someone will one day have to explain to me what kevin johnson was actually doing during the break because for me the honest truth truth for me is that kevin johnson does not show any quality and any leadership as a coach right now royal am was not playing well the pitch was fine yes it may not have been the best but it still looks like a decent pitch like the kevin yeah i like i'm yeah, I don't have words for how bad Kevin Johnson was. He was just terrible to watch. And and the thing is that why one thing I hate about coaches like Kevin and Umelef Nseki is that they are too nice. They don't have the kind of fight of Rulani, the kind of fight of Nazareth Nabi, because I've seen v videos of what Nazareth Nabi looks like. Peter Musimani, Pep, Klopp. They don't have this thing of keeping you accountable why do i say that all of us have seen how bad matt was all of us have seen how bad castillo was all of us have seen how bad so many of um, so many of the players played today like how bad they were but in the next game those very same players are going to play meaning guti the coach is so scared of not looking being nice to the players or looking like a bad person etc that he won't do drastic decisions Sometimes drastic decisions is as simple as saying, uh, Dupree, you are now going to be playing as a left wing. I'm going to put Duba as striker. You know, these are the things you I wish to see. I wish to see him say, Matt, I am dropping you. I am going to bring in uh, Samkelo Zwane and uh, Castile, I'm dropping you. I'm going to bring Ted. Drastic decisions, you know. That's what I want to see from the coach. I feel like Ungobo needs to take a rest. I would even want to make Ungobo sit down for Rumfundo Villagas. And a lot of you will say I'm crazy. But I would do it. I would say Mfundo, go and play. And next game we're playing an NFD team. Or an ABC Mutipe team, Milford or something. For the Net, um, Net, uh, what's it called? Net Bank Cup, whatever that thing is called. We are playing a lower league team. I expect to see youngsters in that team. Yes, we're going out to win. So backline should not change. Backline should not change. Maybe even start on Ted. But in the front, we need to put the youngsters. If not a youngster, put at least Gonzalez, then put the youngsters next to him. But I would prefer to see Duba start that game. Duba needs a 45 minutes. That is what I'll say. I'm a Kosi for life.